let's go right now into our preparation of the peace, preparation of the prayers. As you prepare to fall deeper, let's go quickly review. We went through the sealing of God's chosen ones that were going through their own tribulations of the 144,000, marked with a seal right on their forehead. And that was leading up to the last seal, the seventh seal, which was in chapter 8. Seven trumpets were to be sounded. They went through four of them in chapter 8. There's three more. So those that are inhabiting the earth, <clears throat> you've gone through enough, and you are still rejecting God's love. This is not a picnic. This is not something to laugh at. This is power, demonic power that God is permitting for those who did not choose His love and grace. And with this, it comes into a night. So, dear Lord, we open up our hearts and our minds to come into the revelation knowledge to pour out your strength deeper into us. Love us, God, us, take us to the altar as we throw our life onto the altar of, of you, O oh Lord. Take us, love us, warriors. Chapter 9, starting with verse 1. And the fifth angel sounded, as I saw a star fall from heaven unto the earth, unto him was given the key of the bottomless pit. And he opened the bottomless pit, and there arose a smoke out of the pit, as the smoke of a great furnace. And the sun and the air were darkened by reason of the smoke of the pit. And there came out of the smoke locusts upon the earth, and unto them was given power, as the scorpions of the earth have power. And it was commanded them that they should not hurt the grass of the earth, neither any green thing, neither any tree, but only those men which have not sealed, have not the seal of God in their foreheads. And to them it was given that they should not kill them, but they should be tormented five months. And their torment was as the torment of a scorpion when he striketh a man. And in those days shall men seek death, and shall not find it, and shall desire to die, and death shall flee from them. And the, sh and the shapes of the locusts were like the horses prepared unto battle, and on the heads were as were, were crowns like gold, and their faces were as the faces of men. And they had hair as as the hair of a woman, and their teeth were as the teeth of a lion. And they had breastplates as it were breastplates of iron, and the sound of their wings was as the sound of a chariot, of many horses running in, running to battle. They had tails like unto scorpions, and there were stings in their tails, and the, their power was to hurt man five months. Hurt man five months. And they had a king over them, which is the angel of the bottomless pit, whose name is, in the Hebrew tongue, is called Abaddon. But in the Greek tongue hath his name Abelon. One woe is past, and behold, there come, there come two woes more hereafter. Oh, brethren. Oh, turn it right over to the Lord. Starting with verse 1, there will be an unnamed star or person. A star is said to fall from heaven. If we look at the star, and it's used to refer as a star, but it's just a person. The word star is a symbolic way to refer to a person or fame of a high position. He said to be have a star fallen from heaven to earth, as in the past tense. It means that he was already fallen when God gave him the key to the bottomless pit. Christ said that he saw Satan fall from heaven. Luke chapter 10, verse 18. And he said unto them, I beheld Satan, Satan as lightning fall from heaven. There was Luke chapter 10, verse 18. A scripture gives glimpse into the fall of Satan. He was apparently the highest archangel created by God, but he did what every person has done, begin to look at himself and choose to go his own way. Therefore, God had to do what he had to do with everyone, everyone and all of us when we reject and rebel against him. God ca had to cast Satan out of heaven, out of his holy presence. Isaiah chapter 14, 12 through 15. How art thou fallen from heaven, O Lucifer, son of, son of the morning? How art thou cut down to the ground, 
which just weakened the nations. But thou hast said in thine heart, I will ascend into heaven, I will exalt my throne above the stars of God, I will sit also upon the mount of the congregation in the sides of the north. I will ascend above the heights of the clouds, I will be like the Most High. Yet thou shalt be brought down to hell, to the sides of the pit. To the sides of the pit. Brethren, we must move upon the measure that God is presenting to all of us. God wants all of us, all of us, to take and to go and to turn our lives over to God's loving, loving embrace. Feel His time coming to us. Feel that inheritance flowing from us and into us. <clears throat> the point is, He has given the keys of the bottomless pit the, the abyss, the place where scripture says the demons and the devils are kept. And comparing scripture with scripture, the fallen star or angel seems to be Satan himself. There will be the bottomless pit, the fallen angel of Satan will open it. Or what is the bottom, bottom, bottomless pit? It is the place where evil spirits and demons are kept. He will not command them, them to go out into the deep. In verses 3 of 3 through 6 of chapter 9 of Revelation, evil spirits' judgment will be the locusts like demons from the deep hole. They will be sent to inflict unbearable punishment upon the ungodly. Why are these demons called locusts? Because locusts are a symbol of God's anger against the ungodly and evil of the world. So let's take a look at just a few facts about the judgment of those locusts like demons. They will be given scorpion-like power. Verse 3, the scorpion strikes its victims with its tail, its sting is in its tail. It has a poisonous fluid that, it, that injects into the wound of its victim. The sting is not fatal, but it causes terrible suffering. What is being said is this, that the great tribulation demons which with scorpion-like power will be set loose from the bottomless pit. <clears throat> the locust-like demons will be restrained from damaging nature. They show that they will not be real earthly locusts, for the locusts feed upon vegetation. The locust-like demons are to inflict only people who do not hail the seal of God. God will seal his people during the great tribulation. His people will, ha will be protected from suffering the judgment cast upon the ungodly and evil of the world. The locust-like demons will not kill people, only torment them. This is critical to note. This fact alone seems to point to the demonic force being some locust-like animal that actually sweeps the earth, animal that, animal that stings people with some poison venom that torment but does not kill its victims. Does not kill its victims. The result of the torment upon people will be so agonizing and the pain so excruciating that people will beg for death, but they will not die. In verses 7 through 10, the evil spirits will be the appearance and the power of the locust-like demons. But the descriptions are given, the point being made is the terrifying appearance and power of the demonic forces of the end time. We must prepare that as we bring, as we receive Jesus Christ, we are receiving our personal Lord and Savior, who can take us and remove all the bondage and the yoke of sin way away and away from us. We see this for the demonic locusts are like horses prepared for battle, poised and ready to attack. This could also mean they will be larger than the average size locust. The demonic locusts will have heads that look like they are crowned with gold. This symbolizes that they will have authority to afflict men. They will be as conquerors and be successful in their attacks. And their demonic locusts will appear to have the faces of men that symbolize the determination and intelligence of men. They will sit like flint in their attacks and have the intelligence to attack and inflict damage with a scorpion-like poison. The demonic locusts will have hair like a woman, beauty to seduce and ensnare, to help them seem insent and harmless at first. The demonic locusts will have teeth as a lion, ferocious, fierce, devouring, and cruel. 
The Dramatic Locust will have breastplates of iron, indestructible, protected, and defined, and defended. The Dramatic Locust will have wings that sound like many chariots rushing into battle, frightening and overwhelming. And the Dramatic Forces will have singing tails like scorpions, Dramatic Torture. We come into this time, brethren. Four things are said about Satan. He is an angel, a creature of enormous beauty and strength. He is an angel of the bottomless pit, a fallen angel. He was once an angel of heaven, a servant of God. But now he is an angel of the underworld, a sin of evil and of ungodliness and of, and of righteousness. He is a king and ruler and governor over the bottomless pit. He has both a Greek and Hebrew name. His Hebrew name is Abaddon, which means destruction, and his Greek name is Ablon, which means destroyer. What better name could be there to describe this ruler of the demonic locust? <clears throat> Again, I say, it all starts with one step. all starts with also a cup. This cup my wife just brought in has some tea in it. It's going to be empty in a few minutes, but God wants to give you the cup of wisdom. It shall never go empty. All we have to do is ask for a refill. Thank you, Anita. But before we can have that cup of wisdom, we have to turn our life over to the Lord. This is your opportunity right now as we prepare for the end. We are living in the end times. But let's prepare our hearts for strengthening, for be baptized by the blood of Calvary. Be baptized in his holy name. For whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. Are you with me, brethren? Whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. We went through a great deal of lessons coming up to this stage of, Re of Revelation chapter 9. We also, in our Sunday series, are teaching, let's call it the testimony, the victory testimony of Joshua, the crossing over into Canaan, the promised land. He sent, spy, he sent his people one by one into Jericho, and, the, and a young lady, Mihab, <clears throat> a prostitute at one time, did God's work and changed her. Jericho was destroyed. They had 40 years to turn their life over to the Lord. There was only one building left, and that was Rehab's building with a purple robe on the outside window that was spared. <clears throat> Everyone has their time frame to be saved. But God's time frame, and I, I'm not predicting the end times, but it's, if you hear and read what's going on in Europe and Northern Africa and the Persian Gulf, you read of prime ministers and presidents endorsing, you know, this lifestyle of Satan, focusing on worshiping money. We should be worshiping God. We should be worshiping the truth. We should be worshiping all and all and all a glorious time. For the change is coming. For the change is coming to the new you. That change is coming for the power and the strength to bring that change to you tonight, this morning, wherever you are. It's happening. You just, it could be at 4 a.m., 4.30 a.m. in the morning, wherever you are. could be at 7 p.m. in India. 7 a.m. in India right now. Take this time. Now, in the matchless name of Jesus, now, now, now. Repeat after me, dear God, I admit I am a sinner, and I need your forgiveness. I believe that Jesus Christ died in my place, paying the penalty for my sins. I am willing right now to turn from my sin and, and, and ask Jesus Christ to be my personal Lord and Savior. I commit myself to you and ask you to send the Holy Spirit into my life and to make me and fill me up with the Spirit and make me the kind of person you have always wanted me to be. Thank you, Jesus, for bringing me forward. Thank you for loving me. That's my wife praising your name in the background. I am praising your name, most important. 
The angels of heaven right now are praising your name before the throne of God. Before the throne of God. We encourage you to get into a Bible-based believing church. Get into the interactions and reactions of the people of the saints. You need to be around people. You need to be around people. Anita and I, we go into 200 countries daily, seven days a week. We may not be shaking your hand, but God is bringing our spirits together. But we encourage you to get into a Bible-believing church if you live outside of L.A. If so, you do live in Los Angeles, California, come and join us for Sunday, service, Sunday worship service at 11.30 a.m. Our address is on, on our website. We also encourage you to come and get to know us at BrianTewitt.com. BrianTewitt.com. We have several auxiliaries that you can be a part of. We have several crusade teams that you could travel with us and be on our medical team, our evangelical team, our translation team. We're here for you, but we also need you to become a financial partner into our ministry and ask you to guide and bring us to your... And we'll guarantee you today that <clears throat> your return on investment of your offering will come back to you how deep you are, your, off your obedience of your offering is unto the Lord, how you die daily and you are crucified daily and carry the Christ of cross daily. The measurement of your faith depends on that. In Jesus' name. So let's back up our faith with our works and our works with our offering. In Jesus' name. And we, again, we thank you for your prayers and support ahead of time. This is quite the understanding that God brings to us. Quite the understanding that God changes all of us. All of us, all of us, all of us. We come into his time frame. Do we want to be attacked by God's attackers? The, the demonic forces? The locusts and terror they inspire. The devastation to the world. They literally are figurat figurat figuratively. They do not hurt plants, but they target people, the lost people. They have a king. We see here, it is a demonic invasion. <clears throat> the description of the purpose is to torment men for five months. Death will be a goal, but no one will, will die for five months. No funerals, no obituaries, no wakes, nothing. Every suicide will be impossible. Imagine that. Description of the personalities and the horses that invade the army, crowns authority, no one will be able to, t to do away with them. The faces, the intelligence, hair, the attraction, men may be, men may be drawn to them, the teeth infective, lion spite is the most infectious bite known. In this time, the destruction, they are organized in the and the name of their king is destruction. They have a job and they will perform it well. What will it be like to awake one morning and find one of the, these fearful creatures staring at you and waiting for you? Many will find out. Yet at the same time we preach to all of you that none of us will find out. And that is what Anita and I do. We give the love of the Lord to you. God brought this to our our table, God's table, to teach these lessons of Proverbs 6 a.m., Revelation 6 p.m. In between, my wife has given you the gospel of truth with her talented preaching, teaching, healing. If you are inflicted by anyone with cancer, there's a lot of people watching us tonight who have cancer, who have eating disorders, emotional disorders, Get into the Word of God. The Word of God is a healing. If you ha have the faith of a mustard seed, you, you are new in Christ, you don't have to go out in your community asking someone to touch you and heal you. You have the power to do that yourself. Jesus loves you, wants you, wants to have you as a, your vehicle, your body, as a temple, a habitation of your glory, habitation of your glory so you can 
bring the lost souls of the kingdom of God. Witness unto the lost souls, lost of the people. Raise the praise every day. Pray every day. Lift up your repentance every day. Ask God to fill the cup of wisdom. God, Brother Bryant wants a refill of wisdom. Thank you, Lord. Because Anita could never accuse her husband of having not. Because I ask, and I ask. I definitely don't go out of day without asking not. For we have not because we ask not. And it's time to focus on all, brethren. It's time to focus on our reality of our redemption with God. We are redeemed. We are redeemed. Not in the process of being redeemed. Not when I grow up and get out of the sandbox of my sin. I'll possibly be redeemed. You are redeemed. Let us all stay focused in God's living word. Let us all be the inheritance of the truth that God has always wanted us to have. Come into our lives, O oh Lord. Guide us into that nutritional loving support. Bring to us the guidance of your absolute truth. Bring to us that coming, coming stone, the removal of, of the old rock and the old self just being thrown away. The new self coming forward in the name of Jesus. We see this and we want this all. We come into your glory, O oh God. We come into your path. Take us, love us, we're yours. Sing unto us. All sing on. Be, let us all be an example for each other. Let us all come and guide us and feel us to one another. Lord, take me. Love me. We're yours. This world is incredibly confusing for the lost God. Bring your blessing. Bring your love throughout all the land. Throughout all the land to come unto us, God. Guide us into your life, your world. Guide us away from all temptations, desires, being controlled by demonic forces. We feel the joy of Jesus, the love. And God's way for all. God's truth for all. We don't want to be on the receiving end of any of this. And I just read up to, to chap, verse 12 of chapter 9 of Revelation. That was just one of the three wo remaining woes that are coming. And we've already side, s survived four plus six other trumpets. And if you, these, there are going to be people that still won't receive Christ. They definitely deserve hell. Now, for everyone's education, is there anything deeper than a bottomless pit? Yes, there is. It's called Tartarus. Tartarus is a special place for angels that were separately thrown out of heaven that actually taught in Genesis people how to f fight people and they um, had a, had sexual immorality with some of the people on, on, on this earth during that time and they are in a special place right now because Tartarus and hell have not been created but God Jesus does take a visit with them in Tartarus and again that is a nine day journey south of the bottomless pit so Tormention, to be tormented or not to be tormented. If that is the question you need to ask yourself, please call 911. Get some help. You really need to get some help. Heaven, I mean, hell is not a place like a nightclub. They can have a few drinks, pick up a couple of women and men, and go home and watch ESPN. No. No. We saw the beautiful, beautiful truth of what happens 
in, Re in Revelation 8, verse 1, we, uh, there's, a, there's silence upon heaven for a whole half hour. We've been having its own praise and worship party. Silence comes. God is feeling the, the, the aroma, the oil, the incense of prayers coming before his face. He also knows that there's nothing going to be what did happen, what is going to happen that is inflicted upon all of that part of the world as in Revelation 8. And there's two more woes coming. Two more woes coming in Jesus' name. So let's worship the Lord together. Let us stop worshiping ourselves. It is perfectly fine to have a favorite athlete, providing that we don't kneel down before him. When I was younger, I I liked the Montreal Canadiens. Uh, uh, Muhammad Ali, Dr. J, Jerry West. But I never knelt before any man or any famous athlete or any rock star. But brothers and, brothers and sisters, we come unto you asking all of you to feel the powerful truth of the Lord coming to you. Let's go before the throne of God and pray. On that note, the powerful truth is there before you. Take this wisdom, drink of the cup, Unlock that treasure chest of blessings and provisions for you. For God is not a secret. His love is real. Baptized you are by the blood of Calvary. Let's pray out. Dear Jesus, we thank you for your love. We thank you for your embrace, your touch, your truth. Your freedom will set us all free. Your freedom is going to guide us to the everlasting touch called eternity. The road of grace has got given us that road, the expression of your love. Faith is backed up by our actions, our, our works. Hope, faith, and love. Jesus, you bring us to that door called faith. You open the door and you bring us into our new home called the house of salvation. We thank you for this lesson of Revelation chapter 9, 1 through 12. We thank you for your love. We thank you for your depths of our hearts that you've given us. For in the matchless name of Jesus, in Jesus' name, we love thee. We love thee. We love thee. Brethren, that does con conclude our broadcast for this evening. And good morning to you and good day to, to you and your part of the world. Just do take the strength. Ask God for all strength, especially to teach you how to repent and pray and get into the living word of God. And if you need a Bible, do contact Anita and yours truly, Brian Hewitt to send you a Bible, no matter where you are in the world. Again, we thank you for your time. Until next time, do visit us and keep up to date with all of our exciting news and information of our Crusades at BrianTewitt.com. We walk by faith and not by sight. Au revoir, audios. Good day for the people.